And now we're going live in five, four, three, two, one. Welcome, welcome to the Ethan and Elvin Show. I'm the host, creator, executive producer, Ethan Ziltner. I'm here with 14-year professional athlete. Because it's not just a basketball player, are you, Elvin? No, I'm an athlete, man. Athlete. I'm an athlete. Elvin also squeeze into the shot a little bit. I'm just talking about man, y'all spit over that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're right. me <laughs> squeeze in. We sit right, on yeah. each other lap. Anyways, got NBL insider Jake Beckett. John, you got to turn the knob up. It's the second one. Hopefully, you figure it out. Johnny's on the board. Did you figure it out, John? Jesus Christ. Anyways, it's episode fifty-seven, fellas. We're up, we're running. We got some news in the NBA to get over. Oh, yeah, we're based out of London, Ontario, Canada, and we're in association with Ziltner Media. How's it going, Carter Beckett? Hopefully you will be on soon to give us some information. Anyways. All right, fellas. Tuesday night was a busy... Oh, sorry, Monday night was a busy night for the Clippers and the Houston Rockets. Now, holy crummies. That was an interesting game. Um, who even won that game? The Clippers won, right? Yeah. Clippers won. Lou Williams was playing well. But it's what, more importantly what happens afterwards because there was some stuff that was said right over. Trevor Reza, Gerald Green, they took exception to something Austin Rivers said to them. Now, I'm not quite sure what was said. We're not really sure. It doesn't really matter. Well, it was something very inappropriate, I'm assuming. And, Elvin, you were saying this. Sometimes people just don't want to hear it from certain players. Isn't that right? Yeah. And I think Austin Rivers, well, I think it's safe to say Austin Rivers finds it. He falls in that category. <laughs> Dude, like, just, number one, man, because you got to think at that point, man, it's, yeah, it's the NBA, but you have players like Joe Green, players like Trevor Reza, like I am hands down better than this guy. And worked hard for it. Yeah, and look at the contract that he has versus the contract that I have. So Very at true. that point, man, like guys like him, I was even say a guy like Chandler Parsons, like you just go out and you make your money and don't say nothing to <laughs> nobody, you know, and just play basketball. And But it's the league, right? And it's, it's, it's kind of like, you know, every day kind of people you feel like you make more money than this person you can talk crazy to them whenever you want to it gives you like that that false courage or whatnot i think that's what austin rivers fell into and wasn't expecting the reaction that he got and didn't know what to do afterwards so it was yeah you just can't talk to people like that man. no you can't and jacob what were some of the ramifications of those two going into the locker room because at first i thought chris paul and james harden were going to be giving him a hard time and, um, yeah, they well, was, weren't. No, actually, I was surprised that only, well, once the news came out, I wasn't really surprised, but only Gerald Green and Ariza were fined and suspended two games. Um, I guess the investigator found that uh, Chris Paul and James Harden were kind of there to calm the thing down. Yeah, two games, that's fair. People are wondering why nothing's coming of Austin Rivers. Elvin, is there going to be more to come from this, or do you think he just got lucky? Uh, I, I think it's a, you know, it can be a case of where he's got lucky, or they can just be looking into it a little more to see. And just a finer. Yeah, just to see what happened, what actually happened. Man, because I don't think just a youth suck or anything like that triggered guys off like that. It's got to be it, something it, more. It, yeah, it has to be more. And uh, you know, they'll probably you know, go a little bit. Into it, but then we never know, right? It's probably okay. We handed down the fines, the suspensions. We got to move on to the next games, right? Because so you're dealing with a multi-billion-dollar, you know, thing right there. So you can't focus all of your attention on one thing for too long while other games and things like that are going on. So yeah, that's very true. Very true. Also, the police agree. Anyways, oh, more kitty talk, stupid kitties. Anyways, moving on from that. Well, actually, one last thing. It's very good because I thought hearing that Chris Paul went in there. At first, everyone heard those rumblings how Chris Paul let him in the secret alleyway, you know, all that stuff. There's secret compartments and secret freaking everywhere in the Clippers. Anyways, very untrue. Chris Paul was actually just being a mediator because I wouldn't expect that um, 
the leader or the head of the players association to actually go try and fight someone. You would think you would want that looks very bad on the league. But yeah, anyways, it's just, but when situations like that, man, that's that's how it, a lot of stuff, and you see it in all leagues. It's just it's outside people taking information and trying to turn it into what they because they don't know anything yet. Because you don't know. Like if 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 I'm playing here with the Lightning, let's say, and for whatever reason I get traded to a Niagara wins or whatever. I have no personal problem. I might not like the organization. I might like like the call that the head guys made. Doesn't mean that I'm not cool with the Garrett, the mole, the this and that. You know. True. So even if we get into Your a coworkers. heated, yeah, even if we get into a heated altercation, we're gonna leave it on the floor after it's over with. You know, because of the respect factor that I have for them as people. You know, I'm not I'm not gonna take it off the court and go trying to meet them in the locker room to fight and stuff because I'm mad with what the head office decided to do. It's not their call. And I think that's what it was. Everybody's, like, wanting Chris Paul to have this deep hate and stuff. So, towards the Clippers, to anything. And you're right. I don't think it's there. Anything that – I'm, I'm pretty sure he's – you know, you're going to chirp, right? Like, and it's going to happen. Like, you're going to – it's, it's going to – competitiveness, right? Like, you know, it's, it's going to get chippy. It's going to – that's going to happen. But at the end of the day, I'm pretty sure he can go down he that line. He still has love for the city. He can go down that line and, you know, shake – everybody's hand, you know, and they're going to say players up, yeah. and all, or even trainers. And, I bet you. and then go on about our ways. You know, we, we came out here, we competed at a high level. I either, I got the best of you. You got the best of me. See you next time. You know, it's not, you know, I'm not going to take what you said in the first quarter and, and try to take it into the locker room after the game. It's just, I think there's, this just the media fishing, you know, trying to make a big issue yeah. out of it all. And this is why I'm glad we had a little time between podcasts because, I personally hate speculation. I hate going off and trying to make assumptions and figure out what's next and all that jazz. I like how it's all been nice and wrapped up. Joe Green's got his two-game suspension. I th- I personally think Austin Rivers got lucky. I think the NBA is just going, you know, you're injured right now. I, I wouldn't be surprised if I hear a uh, $25,000 fine, but yeah. Um, my next question is this, though, fellas. What are the Nets going to do with the $6 million... Um, they received for Jeremy Lin's injury because, you know, he's out for the whole season. In the NBA, this is the season where everyone's getting some exemptions. The Pelicans received $2.7 million for Alexia Jinx's injury. I'm more focused on the Nets because, you know, I got a little soft spot for him. And by the way, thank you, Daniel Tavares, for tuning in. How you doing? Um, my question, though, is I guess I'll go with you, Jake, first. What are the Nets going to do with that $6 million? Do you think it's just going to sit there and do nothing, or do you think they're actually going to be able to pull a trade to do something with their money here? I think if they're the front off- the front office, they're going to want to try to add something. They've been like plagued by injuries, especially the point guard job position. Uh, they need talent, yeah. Yeah, they need anything right now, and I think $6 million is enough to go out and get somebody who can put in some solid minutes from them or even is enough to put it together. And See, this back. is where, like, a guy, hey, Elvin, why wasn't Gerald Green, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Gerald Green, guy who's got a potential, just sitting at home doing nothing. You're and playing he basketball with his dog in the drive. <sighs> like, that kind of scratches my head, how they don't go and talk to guys like that, you know what I mean? Because I'm going to be honest with you, if I was in a head office, that, that would be some of the things I'd ask. I mean, uh, Elvin and I have been talking about Gerald Green services for a long time. I even said how, and I always say this, how he would get very, he would help out the Raptors all the time. I'd always say I've that been, for certain players. Uh, but I've been saying that. I've been, but he saying, would be a perfect fit, right? I was saying, I said him. I said, um, Lou Aldang, if he I gets brought out by the Lakers. Chandler. Wilson Chandler. I said guys like that, they need, yeah. guys, they even to be honest with you, dude, like even a guy like James Johnson, I was saying that from the get-go. Oh, God, don't even a get me started. A guy like that could help them out a whole lot, man. But it's, I think in today's league, everybody's so see, everybody's so adamant. Somebody, everybody's so hell-bent on having this guy that's just not doing it, but we're going to turn him into the guy that does it to where we let guys that we know can do something sit at home like Gerald Green was. They, there's so many teams say, you know what, we got a, we got a player. He has Nate potential. Robinson. He has potential, but – we want to get the credit for bringing that potential out, you know, during season, during gameplay. We want to have that credit for bringing this this potential out instead of just getting a guy that. Because honestly, I think if I if I own the team or if I was GM of a team, I'm going with for sure, you know, especially in a in a league like that. If I see a Gerald Green sitting at home, and I'm sitting there and I know I'm struggling off the bench for the Nets have to try yeah, and make the playoffs. They yeah, don't have a good pick because yeah, yeah. it's going to the Cavs. And I'm struggling in that position, though. He's proven. He's proven in the NBA to be a solid contributor. Or Nate contributor. Robinson. 
Yeah. A guy who's joining the big three now because yeah. no one in the NBA Dude, wants to sign I'm, him. I, I don't said, even get it. I said, before all this contract stuff was happening, when Derrick Rose went down and he carried the Bulls in the playoffs that year, though, he should have got a nice contract then. They didn't even he offer him what he was able, He showed what he was capable of doing with the right amount of minutes, you know, with a Bulls team going into the playoffs, though. You take a hot team going into the playoffs, and he, you lose your superstar. If the and Nets, a guy steps up and you don't even offer him a nice contract, though, that was like head scratcher right there. You know, so you're like, saying if the Nets were to offer him as an example because they need some help in the guard position, if the Nets offered him a million dollar contract right now, you think he'd sign? I think so. Uh, he probably would. You, just, you look at it like this, and that's certain, not even a hard yeah, gamble. But you look at it. It's certain guys, right? That you look at them and you say, if I sign this guy, I get better somewhere. You, Nate you Robinson honestly do. Is one of those guys. Because he Green won't care if he starts guys. or not, right? And exactly. as an example, yeah, if you brought in Gerald Green and Nate Robinson, because honestly, if you're Sean Marks in the Nets, you got to try and make the playoffs you don't yeah. have any picks until 2020 2019 2020 so you basically have to try and throw some crap against the wall and hopefully it sticks you got a guy like Jaleel Okafor you're working back into shape D'Angelo Russell you got the right piece there yeah my point is this Gerald Green in his 30s yeah I know in the offseason all you want to do is pick up on your low talent you want a guy under 25 with lots of potential right that's all you want everyone wants that's why Nate Robinson didn't get a contract but let me ask you something Jake they signed Gerald Green and they signed Nate Robinson. What's the chances of them making the playoffs? I always like doing this. I know it's a hard sell. Are they an eighth seed? No. No, I don't. Th- I still don't think they make the playoffs. But they're in a better position going forward. I think going forward, they see that they're young guys that maybe at near the end of their contract, they see the position that the front office wants to take. Like you said, they have no picks, so it's playoffs or. You might as well try something. Stuck in limbo with the 16, 17 picks. (laughs) Yeah. Like the Suns were for years. Yeah. (laughs) Go ahead. And even with Gerald Green, he's been with the Nets before. He performed with the Nets before he went to Phoenix. Exactly. Some of his best years were with the Nets and the Suns. Yes, I I know. All best all-time dunks. He was with the Nets. He got his head over the rim on the Uh, alley. And he did the nice one meal. And and you got to think, man, like, be honest with you, they got DeMar Carroll. He's he's doing well for him this season. Mm -hmm. But – Come on, we all know Demar Carroll trip at half court and fall. He's going to miss three games. You got to have a guy that can seriously. step in and play. Like that's just being honest with you, man. He's like. And here's real, the other thing. Like, Let's say Gerald Green can't stay with the Rockets, even though I'm pretty sure he's staying with the Rockets. Let's say him and Nate Robinson become free agents, and you sign those two for a million dollars each. That's two million dollars of that six million dollars, even even without the cap space they have. They still have four million dollars to play with. You see what I'm saying? Like yeah. that's not even a lot of money to gamble with in the NBA compared to what you're paying some of these guys. Like for instance, Omar Shik on the New Orleans Pelicans, who's making ten million dollars and he's a third line center. Yeah, it's just, I don't know. I think, like I said earlier, man, I just think it's just with the NBA, they're just so hell bent on having a player. And just saying, you know what, we brought this out in this player. We we knew he had it in him. We knew this and that. He's our talent. Yeah, instead of just going with it for sure. You know? Or, for instance, Trey Perk. I'm glad the Knicks finally made him a point guard because I was even saying this in the summertime. I When they said when they signed him to a two-way contract, I said, he's going to be one of those players that's going to get his guaranteed contract and going to at least get a veteran minimum by the end of the year because that's a steal at $75,000 for Trey Burke because that's what a two-way contract is, $75,000, which is a very good amount of money. Don't get me wrong. But my point is this. There's lots of talent out there that the Nets are still passing up on because they're trying to get the sexy name, and that's what the Houston Rockets were trying to do for the longest time. It's finally paid off, but even they have Ryan Anderson. Anyways, that's a stupid inside joke. But anyways, yeah. The Bulls are playing the waiting game on Nikola Miritich, Jake. (laughs) What does that even mean? You tell me. You tell me, please. I don't understand how this is working. Uh, to be honest, it's a little weird. Um, I think they're kind of in a place right now where they are in a position where they can make a run for the playoffs. Things seem to be clicking now that Miritich is back from injury and even um, the dunker. I can't remember. His Zach name. Levine. Zach Levine is back from injury as well. Uh, they put up. They lost, but they put up a good game against the Twist Golden State Warriors. This one? No, the silver ones. Oh. It's all good. It's all good. Um, so I think they're in a kind of position where they can make a push uh, with the right piece, but <gasps> there's a chance. I guess, yeah, there there's is a chance. A chance. Ah. So I think yeah. when Miritich is a solid player, they can get a return on him. I think it's just trying to find the right return for the pieces. You're they not have getting now. a like, for instance, like we were saying, Derek Favors. I am not doing Nikola Miritich straight up for Derek Favors. I want like at least. 
a, two second round picks, to be honest with you. If I'm part, I would want to, I'd try to argue for a first round pick because I would think Derek Favors is a better piece, but they're still throwing their hat in the, in the, in the ring, so to say. My thing is this. Why do they think Nikola Mirotic Elvin is like a, a starting four that's, uh, you know, like a starting four, like a top 10 power forward in the league because, for some reason? Because he can shoot. Yeah. And, and he can handle the yeah, ball a little bit. To, and, and in today's NBA, man, like if you're a four man, five man, and you can step out and consistently knock down a jump shot, you're considered one of the elites. You know what I'm saying? Remember like, Patrick hey, Patterson? Yeah, he's one of the, oh, he can, you know, he <laughs> he can spread Sorry. the floor, he can this and that. But then it's like once you get the ball, that's why a guy like DeMarcus Cousins is so dominant, Special. right? Because you can pitch him the ball and he don't have a shot and he can still shot fake and take your big off the dribble and get in the paint and finish or pass it out to somebody else for a better weapon. That's what's killing him, right? You have guys like Meritage when you kick it to him and he's not open, like he's there. He's just, he has to pitch it off and try to rescreen or something mm-hmm. like that. That's what I don't like about his game. Is just, I mean, he's in the NBA, so that, that speaks volume for his game. But in the NBA, you're giving him the critical a, eye, though. Yeah, just being able to pick and then shoot. And if the shot ain't there, you got to go and get rid of the ball. Because that's to what you said to me with Patrick again. Patterson. Because I remember saying that to you. I'm like, Patrick Patterson's a great thing, right? He's a great stretch for. And you're like, all he does is shoot threes, so you just have to close out on him. And if you watch, he's like, if the if the pick and pop's not working, if they're not if they read it and they're they're going right over that screen and they're going right up under into his shorts, he he can't go onto the block and get you a little hook. No. He can't do anything. And that's why I like James Johnson. So, like, and they and at this point in time, I think the one thing that crippled his game with the NBA is because he wasn't one of those. Because well, Patrick of, Patterson had no, a lot of followers. No, it's because it wasn't James Johnson wasn't the player that's just going to go gun up a bunch of threes. And in no. today's game, everybody loves the three. If you are, you know, you can suck everywhere else in the game, but if you can knock down a three, oh, everybody loves you. See, you know like, what yeah, I'm that's it's another the, thing I would have done in the offseason if I was the Nets. I would have thrown. Tell me if this is crazy. Twenty million dollars a season at James Johnson. Dude, that, dude he can play though. I would, just, like, here's I think, a three year, sixty million. Yeah, I just think when his situation with the Raptors, it was just it was one of the more unfortunate situations. We don't know what was going on behind closed doors, but it's some not, of the they stuff, were in love with Patterson. Yeah, it's seriously. just some of the stuff that I seen him do to the guy. Like I felt like it was unfair. Like you turn around, and you, you were playing, saying that a you lot. You playing, you playing Cleveland, and he hasn't played the first two games. Then in the third game, you just throw him out there and say, "Stop, LeBron!" Like, dude, and he did not, a half decent job that, too. But I'm saying though, that's not you. You can't like. Just just sitting him, he was. Uh, but he oh, had I know. And they DMPs. would start him. He had more damn. Or you'd see him start, and I. Would, this would be the most piss off thing if I was an NBA player and this happened to me. He would start and get like sixteen minutes, yeah, twelve minutes, just, ten uh, minutes, and he's serviceable. Like he can, he's solid on defense. He can rebound. He can actually grab a rebound and push it down the floor. So to me, when the, you know what that says to me, that's Dwayne Casey trying to. I don't know. This is maybe me overthinking it, but that to me says Dwayne Casey's trying to screw with him in the off season when they go, "Yeah, but you started thirty five games and you only averaged this much." And be, uh-huh. He's like, "Yeah, but I only played fifteen minutes a game." But when that, that's starts. why I think that's what's happening now. That's why they kind of you know catering it more to efficiency, right? Your efficiency raising and stuff a great like that, player, like, you man. know. But it, that's something that, if I, like I said, coming back to the Nets and stuff like that, because that's what they do overseas markets too, right? Like you see guys and they be like, okay, you know, how is, how is he still over there? He's only averaging twelve a game, but he's only playing twenty minutes. You get True. what I'm saying? He's only playing half the game. He, he's putting up twelve points a night, twelve and six in twenty minutes. You get what I'm saying? So it's like. I, I just I don't to that I don't understand. But if I'm the Nets, yeah, I push that. I, I've been saying that about James Johnson though, man, like for a while. Oh, you know, it's very redundant. Like I know it sounds like change the record almost, yeah. righty. But anyways, okay, so guys, I'm asking the. It doesn't matter who goes first. You guys can choose. Um, apparently, Robin Lopez and Justin Holiday are on the block, and if they're trying to make a playoff push, I'm kind of confused. But anyways, I think Mark Eaton and. Uh, Miritich and Robin Lopez are a perfect three man three man rotation for your bigs to try and make a playoff push. But anyways, I guess they're trying to trade them. Could you try and put Miritich and Lopez together for something? But then who's going to take two bigs from you? Because they're going to want to trade at least one big back, and I don't think they want that. Right? They're trying to offload Miritich to try and free up space, or they're trying to I don't know I don't know really what the Bulls are trying to do to be honest with you. It seems like they're trying to pull like a Sixers where they were just. Oh, we have an asset. Trade it. We have an asset. Trade it. Yeah, but we're what are they keep making? Zach Levine. And we're only going to keep Chris Dunn, and we're only going to keep this guy. Everyone yeah, else, trade it. What are they making though? Like, what is um Lopez and Lopez? Lopez is around twelve to fifteen a year, if I remember 15, correctly. And then um, Miritich is about what ten. He got that two year, twenty seven extension. Yeah, so it's um. Dude, I'm, I'm, I'm finna shock you with this one, man. If I was your, if I was your Raptors, dude, 
Like I was trying to see what I could throw together. Like they can use. To be honest with you, they yeah, can but use. Yeah, but want to come off the bench behind hey, Ibaka? What no? you mean? Do no, we, just curious. behind Ibaka? Or do you put dude, Valanciunas? Dude. Gee, they're not going to try and take Valanciunas though back because that's what the Raptors are trying to trade. They're, they're trying, trying to trade, trade. Valanciunas. That's who. That's the piece they're willing to settle for because like, they. I'm, rumor has it they're trying to get Delon right. Like player, not sorry, not the Bulls per se, but teams are interested in Delon right? Yeah. Who wouldn't be? He's a solid piece. Or they want to try and get a non buyer Siakam. So like they'd probably try to get, for instance, the Bulls would try to be like, okay, if we're gonna take, um, if we're gonna take Valanciunas, we want Siakam, a non buy or right, one of the three, yeah. and we'll give you something back in return. See, and that's where them. So do you go right and Chris Dunn? Like, but um, they don't want it. I don't know if they no, want it. I think, ways no, I, I think that's where. Giving all that money to Kyle Lowry come back to bite it, you because yeah. it takes you out of those trade talks, right? If you say, okay, yep. we'll give you Valachunas and we'll give you Siakam, you still have that money to take on like Miritich's. You could you take know, on country. the cap. You could take yeah. on that, that, other, that cap or whatnot. Because then gonna, they could do a pick maybe. Because then that's too. That's a, if you think about it, if you have, let's say you say, okay, we're going we're gonna to put Serge at the five. Right, which opens, up the, ain't which opens there. up with Miritich, and then you turn around and bring a guy like Lopez off the bench that's just energy and hustle and defense and stuff, dude. That's solid for your second unit, dude. And even you can possibly have times where you put him out there with a Baca, dude, and that's just that's not bad. That's a good defensive lineup. You got a big that can you can still go down there and get because Miritich points. can handle the ball okay, yeah. But, not a bad, not a bad situation. But you put him out there with like a Delon, with Delon right and DeRose in them. He's going to get a gang of what? Look at um, so wait, you would part with a Nogby or Siakam then? Siakam. So you'd part with Siakam. So then you would keep a Nogby at the three, then with him and uh, Lope, him and uh, sorry, him Mirotic and uh, Baca at the four and five, yeah. or vice versa. It doesn't matter. Really that's not bad because I I can't I like the Nogby guy. Like the guy I was, like man, him. I remember I, people dra- when he draft got drafted um, in the summertime. I didn't know much. I honestly didn't. But I remember looking up his stats, and he averaged like 11 points, and he averaged like uh, 1.7 blocks and like two steals a game. And he was like one of five guys in the NCAA to average like a block and a steal and over like eight rebounds or something like that. And I'm like, this guy is going to be great defensively for us. Yeah. And this is That's what we need. And, and everyone's like, oh, to? I don't know. I can't remember, to be honest yeah. with you. But the, the guy, he, it's just a lot of upside for him. Like he shoots the ball fairly well. And like I say, he gets down and he plays defense. So um, you, you, the Raptors need a guy that they can take out there when you're playing the Warriors and put him on a KD or put him on a LeBron and put him on James Harden and, pe- and players like that. And um, you know, and then you can actually he can actually go in and and then be productive. He went to Indiana. It's a great yeah. school, just yeah. like they, Victor and Oladipo. They, and they hang their hat defensively. Like teams like that hang their hats on defense. Man. So it's like. A quick little search there. Yeah. Anyways, the Pistons and the Raptors played gentlemen. Mm-hmm. They were playing very well. It was a great game. Raptors won 96 91. That was Wednesday night, if I remember correctly. Anyway, CJ Miles had 21 points and four boards. It was a good game. Yeah. What did you think of it? Did you watch much of it? Did you no, watch much I of the chick? No, I didn't check out too much of it. I just, you did. know, watched. I just watched the highlights and stuff. Like the next day, the next morning. Oh man! Yeah, it's just, but I mean, in that game right there, um, I think Drummond he had Drummond had a solid game though. Yeah, had like yeah, he had what twenty one, twenty five, and seventeen. Jesus Christ! That's dominating your big. That is making Valachunas. You know what? <sighs> That's but, a tough day. Dude, and this, and I, mean, I promise you, his twenty five was all in the paint. <laughs> oh, <laughs> guys, I got a quick fan question. I think I'm ahead of you there, Johnny. Carter Peckett says he knows it's early, but he wants to know what teams will make it to the conference finals for both conferences. I'm going to say it's going to be the Raptors and the Celtics. Okay. Book it. And it's going to be the, it's going to be the Minnesota Timberwolves versus the oh, – no, versus the um, – Jeez, I'm having a hard time here. Golden State Warriors. Gosh yeah. darn it. But uh, Golden State's going to go to the finals. Yeah. Against the Raptors. Oh. <laughs> I, just, I, I think you just... I think you just don't want like some false teams. Elvin, like if hoping, the Raptors go to the finals, Elvin, if the Raptors go to the finals, I'm going to buy <laughs> you a Kyle Lauer jersey. No, I, I promise to say your money. And you but, have to wear it one but, time. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. But, um, 
But this the thing about it. All right. Okay. But this the thing about it, though, man. Like I see in the East, like all that East is happening, dude. You can't. You know, don't ever just say LeBron. He's gonna be in the Eastern Conference Finals, dude. Don't you count out say, DeRozan right now. I'm man. not he's counting. A, I'm not counting out. The, the, I'm, 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 I'm. He's not a Johnny. young one anymore. I'm with Johnny. You're gonna have the Warriors and the Cavs again. Listen to final. Johnny. Yeah, don't listen think, to Johnny. No, in the West. Don't listen to Johnny. I agree with him. In the Western Conference, you don't listen to Johnny. When you get to the Western Conference, you're gonna have Houston and Golden State. And in the Eastern Conference, you're going to have... Johnny, want to write these down quickly, actually? You're going to have the Cavs. I'm going to say you're going to have the Cavs and the Celtics. So, wait, 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 one sec. So, my... I'll write it my, down. I'll write it down. So, yeah. I got Toronto and Boston. There's okay. going to be a lot of Petrich farm going around there, but it's just not going to work. So, you got Raps <laughs> and the Celtics. <laughs> yep. Okay. First... The Timberwolves, I think Jimmy Butler is going to emerge very strong in the second half. Wolves and Warriors. And Carl Anthony Towns is going to be a, a mess for him, but the Warriors are going to win. Okay. And then, so you got the Raps winning the East, right? I'm just Hell asking. Hell yes, okay. Alvin. So I'm going to put a star oh. above the Raps, and then you got the Warriors. And we're going to lose in the finals in so six games. Got, so we're going to win two games Raps in the finals. <laughs> and Warrior. Big shot. In the finals, okay. So, me, yeah, I'm saying Cleveland Hot and the damn. Celtics. All right. I yeah. Hot damn. <laughs> um, anyways, I really appreciate everyone tuning in also. But anyways, Jake, what are you saying? Who's going to the conference finals for you? Like Alvin said, can't bet alone. Can't bet against LeBron. Oh, in you the are just in the you're a safe. Bet. Year after year, there's drama during the. During yes, the he's season. a high end Ferrari, but that thing's been into the shop too many <laughs> times, and he keeps screaming at his mechanic and telling him he's an idiot, and the mechanic's finally standing up to him and saying, "No, you're an idiot, and you're getting old, and your warranty's almost up." <laughs> so I'm going to say in the Eastern Conference, Cavs. Um, Oh, I don't know if I want to go Celtics or Raptors. To be it's going to be the Raptors, baby. Mm-hmm. You'll see. Demar Derozan is uh, he's on a fucking he's on a tear. Sorry for my son. <laughs> he's on a tear. Yes, but can he carry the Raptors alone through the playoffs yes, to the will. conference finals? Yes, he will because if, we all know Kyle Lowry's not going to show up. So we might as well just he should, could just go to the bench. He's see he's where my arm is right now. He's just he's yeah, nowhere. Yeah, no, he's, you can't. That dude's getting a hundred mil over three. Don't if, send him to the bench. If they don't run, yeah, no, but uh, no, he's not nah, showing listen, up though. Nah, you know what I mean? He's not coming hear, off the he, bench. He he's get, not. But he he you know what I mean? When he inked that three years hundred mil, it's a regular season deal though. Giving him the benefit of the doubt. You even said it's an eighty-two game deal, Elvin. Anything can happen after this. So, and I mean, don't get me wrong. DeRozan is playing well now, but like Jake said, is he able to continue this? Because this is the first half of the season. Still got a second half and then trying to carry. Like, dude, that takes a toll yes. on you, man. I have to come out of I think him night. leaving in the playoffs early is kind of pissing him off. I think, And it's pissing me off. Yeah, I can piss him off, but he's not going to go out and beat a team by himself. Like, I don't care. No, but I'm really hoping Kyle Lowry shows up a little bit. Yeah, see, and that, but that's your $100 million man. You shouldn't be hoping he shows up. You should be oh, hoping. Right, you should be hoping a DeLon. Million dollar you should man. be hoping a DeLon know. Wright shows up. You should be hoping a Siakam or Porter shows up. Not hoping a hundred million dollar man shows up. I said we, if it was me, which I would have already sent to, honest, to the Sacramento, should, I would have been. Here's some flyers. Yeah. Go there. I don't be, care where you go. To be honest with you, man, he should be having an out of body experience and ready for the first game. I would have signed either Jeff right Teague. <laughs> I would have either signed Jeff Teague or I either would have signed Rajon Rondo. I right. either would have picked up if it was but, me. But you did. When Rajon Rondo got waived, I didn't. I'm not the GM. But if I was I the GM, if Rajon Rondo got waived, I would have picked him up right. and I would have taken his team option. I would have gave him a two year extension because he would have had his bird rights. So I would have right. signed him for another two years, twenty million. And then the money we would have saved there, I would have either signed P.J. Tucker or I would have looked at um, – uh, I'm in love with Jameer Nelson for some reason. A guy like Jameer Nelson to come off the bench too potentially. Yeah. Or even Nate Robinson. I would look at Nate Robinson or even Gerald Green because if I would have saw the list of – I would have listed off all the shooting guards and just did like a top ten in each position to yeah. see who I would look after. A Gerald Green would be perfect for our veteran leadership – or another guy I would look at um, in the long run if he gets bought out by the Lakers is Lou Dang. You gave me like the perfect excuse that make me say, hmm, just not. So, like to uh-huh. me, it's, to me, you found uh-huh. out you look, you already uh-huh. put y'all not making it to the finals on Kyle Lowry. Uh-huh. But I'm just saying, right? Fine, <laughs> you just took the long route, man. I, I can appreciate. No, that he's gonna now. he's gonna step it up. Uh-huh. I got a I got a really big feeling. Yeah. Just like he was meeting Ben Simmons in the back, he's like, I'll meet you guys in the playoffs. Yeah. See what I mean? Like he's like, I'm gonna show up. No, I'm gonna be there. I'm gonna be in a suit and tie, but. 
I see you. He's going to be yeah, doing he reports play. for TSN. No, okay, play. settle I, down. I tried to get a. I tried to get the biscuit. It was too hot when I bit it, so I'm out for six games. I'm out for the first round. Who watched the I'm Warriors and the Bulls turned. game? By the way, who <laughs> watched the Warriors? We didn't get my Western picks yet. Get his Western picks, man. Don't leave him off. Well, it's so, not going to be the Suns, is it? All <laughs> oh, right. I Obviously. Um, I'm going to have to do it. I'm going to go with the Warriors and a team I feel is built for the playoffs, not so much the regular season, the Thunder. Thunder. Warriors win, though. I don't know. That's a good one. That's not bad. Because I was going to say if Kawhi Leonard could come back, the Spurs could easily go to the mm-hmm. Western Conference Finals. It's not a hard thing it's to sell to on. Healthy. But uh, this, the Spurs, I don't see it them winning. But them being fifth in the Western Conference still without Kawhi Leonard, and I don't think he's coming back this season, is he, Elvin? Man, it's going to be tough, man. They he, don't need to rush him, though, right? That's, that's, that's what that, you were saying. Yeah, it's that quad, though. And the way he plays, he's an explosive player. He's a two-way player. So he's constantly loading up on that thing, right? And man, why are they so worried, then? Like, what's so worrisome about Like, is there high yeah, risk of re-injury? With, I think with him, he's always been that Iron Man type player. Get an injury. You know, he, he get a little tweak to one game. He's back the next game and, and, you know, and play in game form and stuff. And now... You know, the ankle and then this right here, and they're actually seeing it take a toll on him and he having to actually sit out and stuff. And people just haven't seen Kawhi Leonard in that, that light, right? He's been that player that's been playing, you know, 70-some games, you know, almost four seasons up into the playoffs when his ankle injury. And now it's like, you know, you've seen it, right? It, you know, you had Derrick Rose at his prime get an injury after injury after injury and a decline. You see players mm-hmm. do that. And I think right about now people are just kind of like, that's a very good you know, point, you're actually. Not, you're not, but I feel like it'd be all right, though, man. All right, well, yeah, and the Spurs aren't in a rush, and they're they're still fifth. Like I can't get over how ESPN had him winning thirty games. I'm like, you're, Greg Popovich doesn't know how to win thirty. He like, he's not going to do that. That just won't happen. They'll, yeah, anyways, who watched the Warriors and the Bulls game? Because I watched Laurie Marquis, and he had some pretty good D actually on yeah. Steph Curry. I'm not going to lie there. Yeah, so I, I saw the clips from that too, man. That guy's that was a good pickup for him, dude. That dude is solid, man. Yeah, it wasn't he, bad. He's um, a rookie too, right? Yeah, he's from Finland. He's a rookie. Yeah, he's I from forgot Finland about him too, man. He could be. They had him in talks about like rookie of the year. Oh, rookie well, of the year is Donovan Mitchell for me. He's, yeah. It's Donovan Mitchell. I'm very impressed with him. I can't get over it. He's leading in rookie scoring and all that jazz, and he's doing get it all that jazz. Come on, guys, that was a good one. Yeah. Oh, right, I'll stop. Um, Oh, that's where Donovan Mitchell went? No, uh, Laurie. Laurie Markeen? Oh, I thought he played in Finland. My bad. Oh, he's from Finland. Is that where his family? Anyways, he went to Arizona University. Very good school. Anywho, um, Donovan Mitchell's my early candidate right now. Him and then Ben Simmons. I don't even have Lonzo Ball in my top five. I think he's like six or seven. I think he's he's still a very solid rookie. I'm not taking away. I just think there's a lot better rookies this year, to be honest with you. There's a lot of good talent. But anyways, what about you guys? Who do you think has got your – who's your – Who's creep creeping up on you for your rookie of the year? I think Laurie's definitely a top three. Oh. Besides uh, besides Mitchell and and uh, Simmons, he's he's proven. I think that's, that's what not makes fair. that's not. I mean, sorry, that's fair. Sorry, that, that's what makes Miritich so expendable. Is the yeah, is exactly. how see, well yeah. Markinen has played for the Bulls. He's Markinen's that big right. guy who can. Sorry, he's that big guy who can pull up, hit threes, uh, beat you off the dribble a little bit here and there, and he's not bad. Even too. he. Block the ball off Steph Curry's face. <laughs> that was my highlight. Yeah. That's not bad, true. What yeah, about you? I'm gonna say it like with it'll be a toss up with Ben Simmons and and Donovan Mitchell. It's just because ever since Ben Simmons got drafted, they've been wanting to see this. He's they, been living up to the you hype. Know, yeah, he's been living up to it, man. And 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 plus he's taking a a, a team like I think that's what put them like the front runners because they're taking teams like the Sixers and the Jazz. And then actually doing something with him. Um, but like you say, you can't take out this guy. And you also like, but still, you got Kuzman in there too, right? With him being a late first round That's pick true. and all that. That's like, a great story as it's well. It's just so many different, you know, things. So I think this would be like a real, I think by far this would be the first time in a while, if ever, that we see it's like a nail biter between four different people. You know, four or five. I know this people. sounds weird, but remember when it was a bit of a nail biter between Emeka Okafor and Ben Gordon? <laughs> Yeah, I do. That it's, makes me think of that. Sorry, I don't know why that just popped into my head. Yeah. That was a bad. But the thing year, about Ben Gordon, he could, he could. He was a go, shooter, though, man. Like that's the thing about it. What bro. happened to Mecca Okafor again? He had a back injury. Ooh, yeah, yeah, like a nasty back injury. He's playing in the D League, though, isn't he? Yeah, he's in the D League now. Good for him. Yeah, that's, that's, that's traded for him. 
Really? The yeah, rights? A couple years ago, the Suns got them from the, Washington. Oh, yeah, yeah. To see the if they could maybe Morris work trade. it. Yeah. Yeah. Let's yeah. see if they can make it yeah. work. Because they have a really good staff there. But his back must be a little temperamental. I don't know. Yeah. But sucks. I seen him in that D League showcase, and he looked. He He's doing good. good. Like, no, he wasn't look like he was nursing it when running or none of that. You know, made a couple a big post dude, moves man. and dunked. He the was ball. a solid big. I liked yeah. him. Yeah, and he was like a rim protector too, right? Very like, solid rim protector actually yeah. for Charlotte. Yeah, yeah. But anyways, Clay Thompson dropped thirty eight points for the Bulls, going back on track there. Yeah. Um. Oh, your daughter's smiling, Jake. Say hi. Anyways, no. uh, uh, Clay Thompson had thirty eight points, four rebounds, and a block. Look at that. Steph Curry, even though he got his he got his shot blocked, um, he had thirty points, nine rebounds, nine rebounds, good for him, and four assists. Nikola Mirotic, he's pleading his case though. He's got twenty four points, six rebounds, four assists. That's not bad, Alvin. No, not at all. But anyways, I got a little something I wanted to throw at you guys. I didn't put it in the script when I sent it to you on purpose. We're making like an all time team quick. I just, this is one I want to see quickly. I just saw it on uh, Basketball Forever. Um, it was between Manu Ginobili, Jamal Crawford, and Lou Williams. They said, you got to pick a six-man to start a team. Who are you going to pick? And I just thought, well, you're going to cut, trade, extend one. That's what we like to do here. Mm-hmm. Elvin, you're the GM. You're always in GM mode. Um, who are you cutting? Who are you trading? Who are you extending? No, this, this is a tough one, man. But, um, I'm about to cut Manu. <gasps> He's doing well, but I'm not to cut him because you, I'm looking to start a team with a six man, and my news only going to get another. You're probably going to get only another year out of him if that. True, um, very true. You know, he's trade tr- value. Yeah, man. I have to trade Jamal Crawford. <gasps> much as I love JC, but oh, wow. he's he's on like you got to look. JC is like what 37, almost 38 as well, right? See what you can get for that, and then you extend Lou Williams. You got to go in that situation with the numbers that's being put up. And I'm not taking nothing away from, you know, Jamal Crawford. Like, he's very – that's, like, very serviceable off the bench. But um, at this time, I'm going to have to just go with what Lou Williams doing. And with the youth of it, you'll get more, you know, longevity out of that than other two. So, it's just one of them situations you just – they just fall in the wrong category. You know what I'm saying? And it's, it's nothing to do with personal play. Manu Ginobili 10 years ago is a different story, right? Yeah, you yeah. look at Manu 10 years ago, you look at Jamal Crawford. But you're right. He maybe you give me this has two, yeah, one You give me right these now. three options 10 years ago, and it's completely different. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, it's, it's, it's just right now you said I'm looking to build, right? So, I got to go with the best young player. And you Manu know? would draw that. Yeah, I was honestly thought, though, I thought you were just going to extend Jamal Crawford because I just thought of the consistency of it. I'm yeah, serious. I thought you would try and trade Lou Williams because of his high value right now. No, nah, I would, I, and that crossed my mind. But then I'm looking at, you know, you mess around and you, you get those – Trade the high value or whatnot. You get a couple pieces for Lou Williams. I mean, and then but are you gonna get a JC, sure thing? and then JC said, "You know what? Something happened. They said, I'm this, I got one more year and I'm done, or something like that." Or I right? got two so, more and that's it. Yeah, yeah. and that's it. And then because he's like, like 36, 37, isn't he? Yeah, he's like thirty seven. So, it's, and I mean, you know, and then yeah. he's a guard too, right? If he was, if they was putting up numbers like this and they was thirty seven and in a big like back to the basket, you had to change it, right? Because they're from paint to paint. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Things like that, but you know, you having to run behind these guards, run off screen and stuff that takes a toll on them. But what about you, Jacob? I can do the same as Owen. No, that, that is fair, yeah, because I was that I was thinking it's pretty mine's pretty much mine's the same thing, too. Mm-hmm. I wasn't sure it was a toss up between Jamal, uh, keeping Jamal Crawford and trading Lou Williams because of the high value, but you're right, though. You're he does have a high value, but what is the value really? You know what I mean? You're not yeah. going to get what you really want in return. It'd just be easier to keep him and have him scoring in buckets off the bench for you, right? Yeah. But, anyways, we're going to try a little something out of our comfort zone. So just don't, just bear with us. We're doing some NFL news. Now. I know a little bit about football. One thing I've always been fascinated with, and because it's always been put into my face, is the Cleveland Browns sucking. <laughs> and they've just sucked for so long. I never understood it. Their head coach, we were talking about this before, Alvin. His name's Hugh Jackson. He's won one game in the last two years, so he's like 1-30 in 30 or 1-31. in 31. It's a terrible record. <laughs> That's not a lot of wins. Usually yeah. you want more than that. And... I'm trying to figure out here how can they fix this because that's literally been the question for the last 10 years. There's uh, there's always been this meme where it shows like uh, there's a quarterback if somebody wears the number two for the Cleveland Browns, it'll just have like a list of other players who have worn it just crossed off like yeah. Johnny Menzel, Josh McCowan, like all these other guys. And they've had solid quarterbacks come through like Josh McCowan. But 
I don't get it. Anyways, yeah. They did hire, though, John Dorsey, a general manager and 25 years of front office, front office experience. He's got 19 playoff bursts, 11 division titles, three conference championships, two Super Bowls, and those are not going to get any better by playing with the Browns. It's all going to stay there until at least I am just joking. They needed a quarterback, but that's been the story for a long time. Do you guys, are you guys familiar with the Browns' um, Terrell Pro? No, it's not Terrell Pro. Yeah, what's his name? Anyways, they have this young quarterback that didn't do that very well. It's a surprise, surprise. Um, but anyways, I hope they do well. I don't understand how they can. I don't know. Do you guys know how they can fix this? This is a complete overhaul, but that's been an overhaul for a long time. I don't know. I think they need to do it through the draft, to be honest. Free yeah. agents are not going to want to go there. Um, Kenny Britt didn't show up. Winning one game in the last two seasons. I don't even know past that how bad they Because they're saying they need veterans, but Elvin. Yeah. How are you going to bring veterans into a you situation can't, like I that? Do. That's the thing about it. You can't bring Even veterans. overpaying them? You could say you you need veterans, but you got to think, once once a guy gets to veteran status, He's he's pretty much banked the money that he wants to bank, right? Yeah. To them, there's like they want to win. When you're in professional sports, you don't want to be that guy that put up good numbers and then win, or so then like put James yourself Harrison in a position. Won't sign there. No, no, they won't get players like that due to the fact that, dude, I don't have time for rebuilding. No, you don't. I want to. I, I got to get to the postseason. I got to give myself a chance to say I at least made it to a conference championship. I at least this. You know what I'm saying? At least I, I, I've not just played 16 games and was done every year. Yeah. So yeah. that's going to be hard. Like Jake said, they're going to have to build through a draft. But it's just I was, like what me and John was talking beforehand, though, man. When teams are losing, everybody's first solution is to fire the coach. And I don't get it, man. I mean, you see it at every sport. And who's going to want to go coach there? Yeah, like the uh, fire the coach, fire the coach. Well, I was just looking. I mean, I don't follow football like crazy, but I kind of, you know, get the gist of it. And we was talking, dude, you have an offensive coordinator and a defensive coordinator, right? And then you have a coach. So they say, okay, we're going to run this play. Basically, the coach is on, like, checking it off, saying yeah or no, right? So if your offense is not working, why fire the coach? If your defense is not working, why fire the coach? You get what I'm saying? I feel like you should only a guy like that should only be under fire if he's making all the calls. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then, or even your GM, right? Because the coach can only say so much. You know, if I'm the coach, Jake's the GM, and I'm like – Hey, is this player coming out of such and such school? I think we should take him in the draft. He can help us. And he says, no, I don't want to take this player. I want to take that one. I can't say, you know what, uh, what is it? That's who takes it, right? So it's just it's, it's true. It's funny to me. Like, like it's, we say, it's man, a hard thing to a fix. A coach is only as good as his players. You Yeah, when you said yeah, that, that yeah, really stuck co- to me. I don't care what sport is. A coach is only as good as his player, right? Because I used Brett Brown as an example because you were you – were, you were, I was just trying as a fine as a common ground. Brett Brown with the Sixers when they were terrible and bad and just trading every talent they had, everyone was saying fire Brett Brown. And the first thing Elvin said was was why? Like he's only as good as the players he has. Like yeah. he, if he's got garbage, if he's got D League players in the NBA, what do you expect? Yeah, but and, yeah, and that's basically to be honest with you for a while. That's kind of like what he had because you remember the Sixers was under fire when they was like they're just tanking the season, signing these D League players yeah. so they can get all these lottery picks in the draft. Well, Robert Covington wasn't good and just yeah. an undrafted. So free that's agent. what he was dealing with, man. So you know why go after that coach, right? Like yeah. when you're dealing in professional sports, dude, you got the best of the best out there. So if you're not putting, you know, the best out there, what do you think is going to happen? It's true and. You like you said, man. You're not gonna take. You're not gonna draw any free agents there, you know. And to be honest with you, it's gonna be hard to get draft picks that want to be there. You know it's what I'm saying? Like, that's just it's crazy, man. It's just one of those situations. Like they're gonna honestly, they're gonna have to try to turn around with what they have. You Make know, it st- it, well, Miles Garrett, Jake, at least finish a five hundred. Well, finishing five. Well, Elvin, let's just get three yeah. wins for the no, Browns. I know five hundred is a is a very it yeah. should be achievable. Yeah, I, the Browns are pretty crap. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, a, there's a player that can help him, though, Alvin. His name's Miles Garrett. Do you know much about him, Jake? Uh, to be honest, no. I don't know too much about him. I've just heard a lot of guys talk him, talk about him at work, how he is going to be a once-in-a-generational player. He's a big defensive back. He's a stud. He just got injured in the preseason. Yeah, I don't know. It just always happens for the Browns that way. It's always it, it always seems to be something. And I I made a joke that I said they need to change the name. I said the Browns' name is just cursed. Just call them the Cleveland something else, anything yeah. else. Call them anything else but besides yeah, Browns. But, yeah, like I think it's the core least, like she said, man, with the – with the Browns, man, it's it's when you like that dude, it's hard. If even if you have a good veteran player, it's gonna be hard to get them to come back. Mm-hmm. You know, like they well, just, Kenny they Britt just was count, supposed yeah. to be a veteran, and he couldn't. Everyone was all over him because there was they didn't have very many good receivers, and their quarterback wasn't a very good quarterback, yeah. Elvin. So 
Kenny Britt was like the kind of the big name they got in the off season, and he did not do very well for him. Uh, like I just said, because but, there was nothing around him. Yeah, but you only hate, what what a position does he play? He's he only, a wide receiver. He only plays one side of the ball. So if, I know. if your quarterback terrible, I run the routes the best I can. The ball's not hitting the spot. It's not hitting the spot. We can score all the, we can score when we want to, but when we get stopped, can our defense stop people from scoring? That's the thing about it, man. There's just so many different <coughs> things, especially in football, right? That you know is that's. You have people that play one side, right? I'm um, strictly this. I'm um, strictly that, and then that's it, right? Mm-hmm. So if you could put together, uh, you know, you, one side is just as important as the other, so to say, right? In football, defense is just as important as offense. Your offense gets up three, you give up seven. God, you think it just kind of look at that, right? It's just that's the thing. But yeah, they just they're gonna have to like honestly. I know it's 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 far fetched and saying a lot, but they are going to have to turn around with what they have. They're not going to draw the free agents. They're not going to go get this draft pick that's just going to come in and just change the whole franchise. You know, it's going to be because it doesn't always work that way. No, yeah. it's going to be hard for them to go out and keep the veterans that they have. Because if I'm seven eight years in, which you still you still can perform at a high mm-hmm. level at that I'm seven eight years in and I'm you know up for a free agency or whatnot I'm not trying to come back to a team where yeah. I've won only one game in the last two years I probably I possibly take a small pay cut to go be a contender you get what I'm saying so it's just what it, I guess they they're in a situation where they're gonna have to get it together with what they have and go from there yeah it's true yeah there's gonna be a culture change there too <sighs> yes. That's why I said change the name from the Browns. Just yeah. Yeah. try something. And I think, I think one thing that they can do like now that can help is just like recruit better. Okay. Because you can't have another Johnny Manziel. How did that slip through the cracks? That's one question that I'd like to ask. I mean, be like, why like, would you guys think that that would have worked? You knew everyone, like, okay, this is where everyone knew Johnny Manziel was having a lot of fun in college. You know who would have known more? The producers of the show. I mean, not producers. The people who run the whole operation for him, the general manager, the owner, the people who can actually reach out to the people, the athletic director and the head coach, and actually get an honest answer and be like, "Yeah, what was Johnny Menzel like? What was he doing?" I don't know. That's what I'm thinking. Um. Anyways, uh, who do you guys got winning against the Jaguars and the Patriots? <laughs> I'm, I'm the Patriots, dude. Like. Can't go against Tom Brady. That's the, they, they like. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you the Patriots. They was, they was like food. It's like one of them things where if you just sprinkle a little too much seasoning, you'll mess it up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, that's what they are. That's what they are right now. They're like perfectly seasoned for this, right? Yeah. The Patriots. I think the Patriots just like honestly. I think they go through the regular season just to be ready for when the playoffs get here. You know what I'm saying? They, they are just they like they're too solid at everywhere. Like, and and, and and that's what that's what. Like that's what, like they, a, that's a team. They could take someone off the street and make him a serviceable player somehow. Bill yeah. Belichick, he can do that with anyone. Yeah, right. It doesn't matter. It's yeah. the most fascinating thing. The Jaguars, though, they have Leonard Fournette. Did I say that right, Johnny? Yeah. I think I did. Um, he's supposed to be really good. He's a great running back. Blake Bortles. I play fantasy football, and Blake Bortles is a big question mark in fantasy because he's some weekends he's really good, some weekends he's not. Last weekend he was very good. He had 88, 88 yards rushing, 88 yards throwing. But the Jaguars have a really good defense. That's the other thing. They have, like, the the I think it's, like, the number one defense or a top three defense in the NFL. That is a that can help you win a championship. Now, just going off of what I know from basketball, if you want to win a championship, you got to be top five in like offense and defense and stuff like that. And that's one thing that can help. Oh, Johnny thinks Jacksonville, Jacksonville for Johnson. Yeah. Oh boy, it's just I don't know, man. You, I tell you what, they finna find out how good their defense is now. Because it's gonna not, be a hell of a They matchup, got a quarterback yeah. that is a killer that they finna play against, and it feeds off of, defenses. and he has an offensive line that protects him, right? So, like, I used to always say, that's why I think I was a big fan of, like, Peyton Manning and stuff, man, because that dude, his approach to the game was so strategic, man, until it was like, if you give him a little too much time, he is going to pick your defense apart. You know what I'm saying? It's and, true. like, honestly, like, if. But like, if you hit Peyton Manning, that was the one thing. Like, I was talking to this one guy at work, Mike Stouchwich. He is a huge fan of the show, and he's a big football guy. He said the only way that Jacksonville can stand a chance, he's intrigued. Is that he said? Is if they can hit him early. If you can hit Peyton Manning early, that's the they were breaking it down. That's the only time Peyton Manning can get sacked in the first quarter a couple times. Yeah. That's when he has bad games because he starts getting rattled. Yeah. But the thing is, he they've been protected for so, so long. You like, don't think you don't think that then that they already you don't know think this too. The first day of training camps or the first week of training camps and stuff. 
Do you see that red Belichick, shirt? We Belichick, no, then say, you see that guy in the red shirt right there? He does not get hit. You Ever. don't think that they brought Ever. that across? Do he yeah. does not get hit. You know what I'm saying? Like, by any means, he or does. They so. probably get told by the veterans. You see that guy? He pays our paychecks. You yeah. see in the playoffs how we get more money because we were in the playoffs and yeah. we get double our salary? Yeah, we protect this guy. You know what I'm saying? This is we how we do it. And that's just oh, yeah, you want to get, like, an extra $10 million guaranteed on your contract because we won a Super Bowl or you went to a Super Bowl? Make sure he's okay. Yeah. Like, oh, that's, okay. That's what it is, man. You know, it was I'm going to take Jacksonville, though, because I hate the Patriots. I'm a Jets fan. Yeah. I have to say it. Yeah. You let you 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 your feelings get into this right now. I've always – I bet it <laughs> – wait, wait, wait. I, I actually, when the Patriots went undefeated, I owed this one person like $20 in high school. And I was like, double or nothing, the Patriots are going to lose. And he's like, they won 17 games in a row. And I was like, yeah, you're going to win them all. Yeah. And they didn't tell it. Eli Manning. Patriot killer. <laughs> He's a New York guy. Yeah. Like New York stepbrother. We won de facto. Yeah. Anyways, go Jets. Go Jacksonville. And also, the Eagles are going to go to the Super Bowl as well. The Eagles are going to beat the Vikings. Uh, the Vikings, I know they had a miraculous little little throw there against the Saints and uh, maybe Stone Cold Steve Austin gave that one dude a stunner. I yeah. can't, I don't know, maybe don't it was Photoshop. I don't think that was a good offensive play. I think that was just terrible defense. Oh. At, at that position, if you look at how the dude even approached, man, like, you tackle him in bounds, the game is over with right there. Like, he just looked like he was trying to clip him out of the air or something and missed. Yeah. And, uh, like, so, really and a, yeah, that's just a, a mistake right there. So, it's like. Aren't you, you a know. Saints fan, Jake? Are you Drew Brees fan or something like that? Yeah. <laughs> so, that's why I'm going with the Eagles. No, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a rookie mistake, though. Yeah, I'm not. Kid, I'm not no, no, that's fair. No, yeah. I'm not to start, John. I'm not to start bad with you And the you Saints guys. weren't even supposed they to. Like, be they like to make their decision out of their. The Saints feelings. weren't even supposed to be there, were they? <laughs> no, the Saints were actually pretty good this year. Oh, yeah. okay, my bad. I, I was a little attention. confused why they were in the wild card though, because they were like a top team in their. Dude. They're the top team I the never understand the NFL's playoff yeah. format. To be honest with you, the NBA makes a lot of sense. Top eight in each conference. Keep it like that. I think they were like. Top three or four record their, overall. In the their league. offense is always amazing. Their defense wasn't very good this year, was it? Drew Brees is the goat. Oh, listen to this guy. Okay. Drew, no, Drew Brees is very good. Drew Brees is a very good quarterback. Better numbers. He'd look better in a Jets uniform, but that won't happen. <laughs> it's easier to say it in baseball with the Yankees. It'll make more sense in the summertime when I can say he looked better in pinstripes. But yeah, it doesn't work for the Jets. I had to take a loss somewhere, Elvin. <laughs> But anyways, we're going to move on to some NCAA news, aren't we, Elvin? Yeah, sounds good, man. Um, like I said, man, with the <clears throat> when you have the, um, like we said, talking about Grayson Allen earlier, right? Oh, gosh, Grayson And Allen. to be honest with you, when he first came out, the guy had a lot of upside. Um, he everybody was arguably was a lottery on. pick, wasn't he? In yeah, his, like his they, was, they was guaranteed that he was going to be a one and yeah. done and out of there, man. But, dude, that shows you um, the, how bad, like, your attitude, attitude, your approach to the game. It's not like Duke's nationally televised, right? Either. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's just, it's just like I said, it's just a, a, your attitude, right? Like you come in, you put in your work, you get out of there. You know, not come in and just, you know, you, you build a you bad reputation. Attitude. You mean like his demeanor on the court, kind of thing? It's not even his demeanor. It's just like his, like, dude. To be honest with you, at this point, I think one of the the craziest things to do in NCAA is to go to Duke. And get into a shouting match or anything with Mike Shashelsky. Do you know how I many? Do <laughs> yeah, you know what that yeah. that dude has? Coached I would because Olymp- I like UNC. He has coached Olympians, dude. Like seriously, yeah. That but dude North has co- Carolina Tar Heels are better. Yeah, Alvin. He has coached Olympians. He's had great. Roy players. Williams he's should be had, the coach. He's had one, of, arguably one of the greatest players to play the game. Like Kobe, that straight up told him, if I had to went to college, I was going to Duke. You really yeah, think? Yeah, because Michael Jordan went to UNC. It doesn't like, I don't want to be uh, like Michael anyway, Jordan. We're talking about Grayson Allen and Duke right now. Anyways. So it's like, Go target. You know, you get there and you get into arguments and, and Shashelsky having to suspend you. Like, when was the last time we heard of a Duke player getting suspended for anything? Dude, Never. Like, and, and so if you're an NBA GM, and trust me, they have high respect. They have a lot of respect for Shashelsky. And they like, he had to suspend this guy. It had to be something bad. Like, they're not trying to take on those. Those attitudes and stuff, especially hell when, no, especially when you know you could have been a one and done, and they'd have just looked at him and been like, you know what, give him a couple of years, he he'll be there. But he'd have still been a lottery pick. Now it's like he's just burnt. He's literally burnt through like he burned years. all of his bridges. Yeah, so it's he? like now I don't know what's Jake. Gonna, what's going to happen with him then? I think it was. It, it's definitely a case of like peaking too early, 
thinking you're gonna your ceiling's a little bit higher. Going back, and listening to too many agents or some bad influence. Probably, think? and then going back to school and it's gone. He late second round. Yeah, if that, I was gonna ask. If, yeah, yeah Elvin, that, do you think he's gonna be a lottery pick? Or where do you I see don't him? Th- yeah, like just like late second round. If that, yeah, he might have to make. A Is he gonna be on a summer league like, roster? Yeah, he'll be on a summer league yeah. roster. But it's just like he said, I, he it's made not a good be a guarantee. He made contract, a good point peaking too early, right? Like, because the thing about it, when you're in high school, you play against, you play, let's say, a thirty game season, you play against like legit teams, maybe four or five times. The rest of the time, it's like little schools and stuff like that. And then you get to a school like Duke, and you having to play powerhouse teams, dude. If you have any weakness and stuff in your game, it's gonna show up then. And I don't think that mentally he was ready for that. And, no, and, and not I at think all. he got a whole lot. He got like real frustrated, right? This move that I've been doing for the past three years in high school, killing people with, yeah. I'm getting it blocked every time now, dude. And that's my go-to move, and I can't get my go-to move off, dude. He's, he, he was mentally, you know, done in, and that's what was called. I think that's what was causing all that, st- you know, the, the stuff, right? And you got that, and he probably come from a system where he's the man. I can talk to the coach how I want to. The team is or everyone kind of back down. Yeah, the team is built around me. Without me, you want win and this and that. You go to a place to, like Duke where they have no problem recruiting people, you know. And now it's like, look, you either perform or you get out, kind of thing. You it's know, and you're not used to that, man. And it's, you see it all the time, it's, you know, when it comes to guys like that. But true. My other question is this: What about? Zion Williamson and R.J. Barrett. How good are those two? They're good. Yeah. Zion Williamson is a freak of yeah, nature. He's, a freak of nature <laughs> he, he's got like a Demarcus Cousins body and like LeBron James athleticism. athleticism. Yeah, it's it's like, but yeah. what about this R.J. Barrett fella? Because he's Canadian, isn't he, boys? He's good. I don't like his dad. I think he ruined um, the men's national basketball team here in Canada. Yeah. Uh, okay. The, yeah. Okay. I, thank you. But thank you. that aside. He's he's a real good talent. I don't think he's Wiggins level good. No, no. Um, but I think I haven't watched much to be honest. I think there's a little more hype around him though, at least on the Canadian side. Yeah, because of who his dad is. His what dad do you re- think, Elvin? I don't even know. Like, I'm sorry. I don't. Who is RJ Barrett? Now? <laughs> oh, like, pull him up. On. Pull him up on the big screen right quick. Man. But no, <laughs> I know, like, like Jake was saying with the Zion Williams from Kid, though, man. Like, it's gonna be one of those things. Like, he's gonna be wherever he goes. He's gonna be serviceable. Like, wherever he goes. He's going to be like, you know, a guy that you can put in and you're going to get something out of him. Um, it's just to see that how he performs when he's meeting elite competition. Like we said, Grace, not night in and night yeah. out, right? When you're not able to just come down and fly over and bully everybody. Because right about now, he does what he have to do. I get to the paint, I'm finna finish through you. I'm yeah. bigger, I'm stronger. And who wouldn't do that, you know? But I don't see him being like one of the guys that – um you bring in and you, you put him in a system and you can't get anything out of him either, right? Have you so. ever heard of this academy, Elvin? Montverded? No. Academy? That's the prep school he goes to in the it's, States. Okay. It's pretty big. It's yeah? Pretty, yeah, it's a good one. A lot of Canadians actually go there. Yeah. Really? A lot of Canadians who go NCAA, kind of fringe NBA guys go to Montford, however yeah. you pronounce it. Montford, that yeah. being said, I think what really helped RG's uh, development is the Team Canada system. His dad's like general manager, president uh, over there. So like, he did play with the men's national team. He played with Steve Nash when he was playing in Hamilton with Rick Fox. Yes, we all know this. We questionable all. that he was on the men's senior team, but I think that experience really what helped him. What do you mean him. questionable? He was like 16, 17, and he's playing with like Kelly Olynyk. There's oh. other guys. There's NBA guys that didn't make the team. Because, what? Yeah, or they might not have won. Wiggins wasn't on the team. I know Wiggins wants nothing to do with Rowan Barrett. He's got issues with him. Oh, That's really? why a lot of the NBA guys, the Canadian NBA the guys. The same thing with Leo Rowans, too. Freak because if you, look at, if you look at the roster of Canadians, this is getting a little off topic, sorry. If you look at the roster of Canadians in the NBA in high-level European, yeah. they're not on the men's national not team. Not anymore, you no. you got, like, Joel Anthony. No disrespect to Joel Anthony. But no, he that's that like he should be on the team. But I know what you mean. Like he's not. I don't know that question. Yeah, I, that questions me too because I always wondered why Andrew Wiggins wouldn't play because for the longest time Steve Nash didn't like Leo Routens. He's like your son sucks, and he made his son play all the time. Yeah. But anyways, Jacob, the NBL insider. <laughs> what happened in the NBL so far? Well, we got some back and forth wins. Um, the Titans, uh, the way their season's going, they actually beat. The edge, they needed top that two win. team in the league this yeah. year. Uh, like you said, they needed that win. Um, it did help that Carl English is out with a broken nose and a concussion. So there's always that. Um, but it was a nice win. 
they. How long is Carl English going to be out for? You think? Uh, there hasn't actually really been a whole lot on it. I only the only reason I know he's out with concussion is because I heard something from another fan. But like, there's been no deactivation, no a report of it yet. Report of it yet. So it's questionable, uh, especially with concussions and how everybody's yeah. uber aware of how concussions are nowadays. It's really a hit and miss yeah. thing. Yeah, I see him coming back and wearing a mask like uh, Royce White though. Well, that's probably what they're trying to do for his nose. That's an easy fix, yeah. It's the concussion they're probably really worried about. But anyways, Jacob, what else happened? Uh, The LC. The next night, Titans, they played Magic, Magic 1. That's a team that's built to win. The Magic Magic with Al Stewart? Al Stewart, Anthony Anderson, Terry Thomas. Terry Thomas is Hazelby. Phenomenal. Yeah. Joe Salerno has done a great job of developing him. Yeah. Salerno's not really a guy who plays with Canadian talents a lot, especially with the the storm. But he like I don't think Terry Thomas is where he is as a pro without Joe Salerno. But I, I say that, but uh, you know, just to kind of like I've worked out with the guy. I see the work that the dude Terry puts yeah. in over the summer. That dude puts in work. Oh, yeah. Like he, you know, He's not to not to discredit, you know, anything from the coach. Yeah. But that guy puts in work over the summer. During his off season, that's one guy that I see. You know, I've I've worked out with him. I've been in the gym, you know, doing workouts, and he's been in there working out. Like the guy puts, because he, I, I think if I'm not mistaken, he has a, a guy, a kid or whatnot close by, right? So he's mm-hmm. he's always around the London St. Thomas area during the off season. So he, he works out here quite a bit. That guy puts in work. So it's just it's like one of those things where you know you see him during the off season and then when he gets in season and he's tuned that way you like you know what you know that, why yeah, you know why and where it's coming from so I think a couple more seasons he's definitely the best Canadian to play in this league no way yeah um, Carl English I don't see playing too many more years no yet. it would have been him if he was a younger yeah. man yeah um, but he's I think talent. I think Garrett Williamson yeah he's, he's dual one citizen Canadian of the year dual citizen Garrett Williamson's a heck of a player you can't discredit anything he's done with London. Uh, in his career as a professional, but I think uh, Terry Thomas definitely has has shown that he can be one of the better Canadians to have played in this league. Yeah, that's that's really impressive. All right, I like that. The Moncton Magic are a team I'm going to have to take a little look see. I like their jerseys. <laughs> yeah, they went with the old uh, classic black and silver. Yeah, I like that. It's the Spurs, the Spurs. Look I'm a Spurs yeah. fan. I can say it. But anyways, Jake Gap, the London Lightning and the St John's Edge played. What happened between those two? It was a very good game. St. John's actually led most of the way, which shows like how good they can be. Even with oh, that Carl was a good the, game. That was a very good game. I think Charles Hinkle is like a top three guy in this league. I'm uh, very impressed with him and that um, Glaze fella. Yeah, Grandy Glaze, another Canadian Big guy. fan of him. He's a yeah. big man. Holy crap. Yeah. <laughs> That's a wide dude. He's a big yeah. guy. Um, he's he's kind of teetered off from how hot he started this season. He's averaging like 15 rebounds a game. He's down now. but He's around 10? But he's a, definitely a... Very solid starter. He's, he's run ten a game. Is that what it is? Or uh, I think I think with how hard he started, yeah, I think he's around ten nine per game. That's so. fine. That's fair though. Everyone yeah. starts hot. But anyways, um, but he's like one of the guys you can throw out there and can like physically match up with a Royce White. He was. I was just gonna say that he was matching up very well against Royce White last night. Actually, he was doing a very good job keeping him in front of him. And I was because I'm a bit of an edge fan right now because I thought they had the edge. Anyways, I gotta stop doing that. Anyways. They were doing a very good job. I don't understand. Well, to me, it was the shot selection down the end. I think that's where they really missed Carl English in overtime. Um, even in the end of regulation, there was a few minutes where it kind of the edge just kind of were still running their sets very well. But it was like, oh, okay, now this is the part where Carl takes the ball. But they go, oh, Carl's not really here. Yeah, I don't, that's kind of what yeah, I thought. I think I think like even with the Charles Hinkle, he's just he's a heck of a talented player. But I think. He's not the same dynamic as a Carl English has. Carl English knows how to handle it as a number one option, yeah. yeah. And like even la- last night's game speaks to how resilient and how good London is. This is their that second too. game where they've battled back. They've tied it late, late in the game. And Royce White and Ryan overtime. Anderson got in a little got uh, tossed, didn't they? Yeah, that's not news. It happens every game. All right, <laughs> I'll listen to you. But that being said. It shows how good London really is when they can battle back from a, a lead, get get into overtime, and like when they had no momentum going into either overtimes, no. in my personal opinion, and they came out and they just blasted. They have they, they did blasted chip the away. Titans yeah. and they blasted the because it was what fifty seven thirty nine Elvin. Yeah, and that, that actually you know I coming have. down the stretch in the third they was down like twenty at one point. Yeah, this yeah. is like I said before, man. When they when they squeezed and they came and won that game and um. 
at uh, Niagara with the coach at the time out, you know, and all that stuff, dude. That it was is, the deciding factor, It factory, is a yeah. big difference, dude. It, on a professional level, mm-hmm. you can win games, but if you don't know how to win games, do what you want. And with London right now, they know how to win games. Yeah. They, If you look at the way they play, if the, even when they down 15, 20, they, everybody play their game. They don't have nobody step yeah. up and put an S on his chest and be like, I'm finna come down. They down 10, they know they're not finna get it back in one shot. They kept running their sets. You man. know, and you see that a lot in this. I see it a lot, in the, you know, in this league or whatnot where, you know, teams be down, you know, six, seven points. And then they'll just come down and start just in transition. You know, you get a good stop, you come down in transition, just gonna ill advise three. You know, trying to get all that back at one time. London doesn't do that. If the three is there, they take it. If not, we get to the paint, we finish. We play That's our true. game and we chip away. And when in professional sports, yeah, ideally you wanna go on ten oh runs, you know, eight oh runs. But, you know, when I was playing, we be down a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Let's chip away. Let's let's try to make this run six to two. Let's try to go on a six two run. That's let's actually kind of funny. Four. Let's try to break it down like that. You know what I'm saying? And eventually you'll chip back. We're not going to get. That's it what all I that. felt like I was seeing with yeah. them because it was like uh, they had 67 points and it was like 88 or something like that. And then uh, there was like eight minutes left in the fourth quarter, and all of a sudden they were down eight points. Yeah, and, and I'm like, oh crap! And then the next thing you know, they hit they hit two, and then they got another stop, and then they got another two. And then next thing you know, you're only down four. Yeah, and it's, that's, that's what happens. And, and then you, and you put yourself in There was a like five minutes left to go, and then I started thinking to myself, oh, crap, they're making a push here. They're yeah. making a push. But then, like I say, man, it's just it's value and possessions too, right? It's, you, you come down, if, if you know, you you up eight points with a minute and a half, use that half minute. Use that 24 seconds. You have to seconds. get stops too, Use that you? 24 seconds yeah. and get, try to get you a good shot at six, seven seconds on the shot clock. And this Even is why analytics miss, are bad, yeah, aren't they? If you miss, if you turn around and you miss – you might get an offensive board. That's a minute that you pretty much burnt the team, has to foul. It becomes yeah. a free throw shooting contest. And not just come down and say, you know what, I, I come down. They had two people trying to trap. I broke it. Let's kick it over here and just take a quick trade. Because you miss it. They get a rebound. They got two people on the other end. Boom, easy layup. That go two points. You know, it's like mm-hmm. it's so much it's so much thinking that goes on. And, you know, that's why, I, you know, I find it funny when I see so many people just trying to critique, you know, professional sports you know to a t like okay this is what they should do this is what they should do you never know until you're in that situation dude. Mm-hmm. you have so much stuff running through your head the game is moving so fast or whatnot and you have very few people that's able to take that situation and play chess with it you have very few people that's able to take that situation and slow it down and see what's happening you get what i'm saying like and that's what it is you i mean the league is wanting to go younger and that's fine so you're gonna have nights like that where you know, you're up eight, you're up ten, and you, you you know the momentum swinging your way. You come down, you take a couple of ill-advised, you know, shots. Other team takes it, get on that's the run. That's what the edge did too, and that's what they was doing. Like you, they were you, down six, and like I could, you could kind of see it. Like there's two possessions. Uh, there's one possession. They settle for a three. It was okay. Didn't make it. And then they go down, they get the stop, and then they shoot another three. And it's like, you guys just, just wasted it. two possessions yeah. on yeah. – And got nothing. Like, for trying to think to yourself, nothing. oh, all we need is just – just two threes and yeah. we're in this game. No, I mean, no, no, it's, no. it's just being able to say, you know what, we hot. It's running right now. It's, it's running, but you know what, let's get a good, let's get a better yeah. shot. Let's make them play defense. Like that's the thing about it, man. And that's it, to be honest with you. When you take a team like London, man, if you're up ten, you might as well say you're tied. Sometimes yeah. at a point, you up ten, it's a tie ball game because they they can go on a quick run. Mm-hmm. It's been times. You know, you've been watching the game and they're down 10. You go to the bathroom and come back and they're down two. You're like, what the hell just happened? You know what I'm saying? Like, it just happens that quick because they run. And plus, they play defense as well, right? Like, when they key in and they play defense due to the fact they got a lot of interchangeable guys. So, like, they have, you know, a rush that's able to get out on the perimeter and guard a guy with confidence. You know what I'm saying? You have, like, that kind of stuff. And it's it's just showing, like, you know, just how they are and where they're at as a team. Now, they're gelling, man. Yeah, I think what really speaks to how good this team is is that they're not blowing teams out. Like, they're on 11 game, I think it's 11 now. Yeah. 11 game win streak, and they've been close games. They've been, I think they've had three overtime games. And so it, it speaks to how good they are and how well coach, uh, that, how well of a job Coach Vassal's doing. So, it's a very talented team. And we actually have a trade to announce. A lot of people already know this already, but Anthony Stover. Former NBL Canada Defensive Player of the Year has been traded from the St. John Riptide to the Niagara River Lions for future considerations, uh, which is basically sports talk for nothing or money, <laughs> and a first-round pick in the next draft. 
So some money and a pick. Yeah. That's the best they could get for Stover. No. Um, I don't know why. Well, I know why they made this trade. Because Stover and Taroba have had a falling out. Um, don't know the details. Everything's hearsay. But there's there's, there's something going on between the two of them. Um, don't know what it is. Don't want to discredit Taroba or Stover. Both are talented in their own ways. But something had to be done. And the front office got something done. Um, actually, I think technically... St. John won this pick, won this trade. Really? Because rumors are Niagara's not going to be back next year. They're going off into their own oh, league, the CBL. Yeah. Um, Maybe so that's really, just talk, they got rid of. Yeah, they got rid of. Well, it's talk from Petco. It's <laughs> threats from be, Petco. I know he also could have been in a hot moment. <laughs> that's a whole you know other what I mean? thing, though. But um, if if they're not back, then that's a pick they don't need. That's and true. That's a pick that St. John can use. Not that draft picks get overly used too much in this league, but. It's still an extra pick. Yeah, it's an extra pick. They get rid of what Taroba probably views as a locker room distraction. Yeah, true. And then they can focus. Uh, however, they have no bigs now. Brian Addison's a big, but he's he's not what they need defensively right now. Stover's probably the best shot blocker and defensive player the league's had since mm. its inception. Uh, he leads the league in block shots per game over his career and total over his career and a lot less, a lot less games than... Um, Cavell Johnson, another great shot blocker. Um, so I think him and Muldrow are going to be a very, very That's what dangerous I've been hearing. front line for Niagara when Muldrow comes back from injury. What do you think of this whole situation, Ovin? No, that's, that's good for him. You know, he gets to go somewhere else and don't have that that whole distraction of yeah. the coach not wanting to play me because we're falling out and this and that. It's pretty much like a fresh start for him. Right? He gets to go to a team. You know, a team that's kind of back and forth and probably bring that missing piece, bring that energy they need. You know, they get the – in St. John, they kind of, you know, get to get that distraction out of the way, whatever it may have been, and they get to focus on, you know, just winning basketball games and things like that. So, you know, it's just kind of – it's it's, it's fit to fit with that, right? I feel like both sides are able to, you know, put whatever it is down now and just focus on basketball. So, good for him, good for them. On that yeah, one. that's true. Mm-hmm. All right, guys, I got a quick question for you from Mike Bell. It's a fan question. He, he messaged me. Why doesn't the NBL have an all-star game anymore, Elvin? Why? Yeah. I think, um, to be honest with you, when I was – it was my my first year here, we won the championship. It was like, heck, we won the championship, and then the all-star game was in, like, St. John. So we couldn't even celebrate. We won in, like uh, – that's when they was in um, – not Charlottetown, but where they was at, but well, Summerside. Yeah. Summer. Before, right? So we played that. We had to go, you know, we went and, you know, just kind of celebrated for like 15, 20 minutes. Then we had to hop on a bus and head to St. John, right? Because they had all the, the stuff to meet and greets and all that stuff, right? But I think what started happening was they they started having issues with like the venues and stuff, right? Because you, you got to turn around and you got to rent the arena, you know, for that time. And players are wanting to be paid and all that. And they just found out, you know, I guess at that point in time, I don't know why now, but at that point in time, they were just like, you know, expense-wise, was it really worth it? You True. know what I'm saying? So it's, it's well, Jake, does that mean it can happen in the future? I think it can. I think they need to change it, though. It's not the NBA where these guys make million dollars a year. They can fly themselves to Vegas or whatever city for the weekend. Or the teams can even cover it, too. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the thing, too. A lot of the teams didn't want to cover that. Yeah. That's what really? I like From talking with um, I guess Magley and, and Oddly and a couple other guys who were involved in the front office years back, it, it, was, it came down to money. Because... If you hold it in St. John, St. John's got to foot the bill for the arena for the for the weekend. Well, it was only a one-day event, I think. So foot the bill for the day. And then every team's got to either pay their players to go or they just won't go kind of thing. Yeah. So I think if the league I see. If the league is in the situation in a situation where they're financially more stable, they have that solid flow of income from sponsors and partnerships. I think they can try and build something. Try there. and try to gauge Gauge with the teams, gauge with the players, because these are a lot of these guys. You only can get them for a year. These guys aren't on multi-year contracts, so I think they need to do a little research, look into what the viability of them footing the bill for it is, um, and then at the end of the day, it's just a matter of it should be hosted in like Woodstock, I think, or <laughs> teams are trying to make expansion cities. Right, Alvin, that's what they should do it in. They should go to a city like Woodstock and be like, hey. You guys, we're on the radar. But I mean, right being a or part, like Subway or something. Being like a that. part of them before, man, is actually it's it's a good thing. It was fun. It, it was fun overall because you get to interact with guys 
from other teams that yeah. usually y'all are trying to tear each other heads off, right? So you get to just interact with them as a person or whatnot. So, you know, and it's just it's, it's just a after a good long season of just battling out, it's kind of, you know, good and yeah. refreshing to just go and just, you know, laugh and joke and just have a game and fun, you know, with the guys. But, you know, I, 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 it could possibly come back. I don't see it, you know, not happening. But like Jake said, you know, they could get together and figure out how to make it happen. It'll be a good thing for the league, though. Now, would you keep it at the end of the season, or would you do, like, a mid-season? No, thing? I would keep it at the end. Yeah, that's the like, smart yeah, thing. Yeah, I, right? I, I would just keep it at the end, man. Because when you're doing a mid-season, it's, it's so much, right? It's like yeah. teams are like, I don't want my guy to go out. Then you got to book out hurt. five days for yeah, everyone. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I just don't want to go. I want my guys to go out and possibly get hurt. And, yeah. and, you know, then I'm missing them for the second half of the season. It just depends on how severe the injury is. So you just keep yeah. it at the end of the season. and. You know, and just go from there. That's how it's always been in every league that I've been, you know, in and uh, with the end All-Star of the year thing. Classic. It's always been like an end-of-the-year kind of thing. But True. All right. Got a quick question for you from Carter Peckett. He wants to know if there's going to be any more NAPB franchises. I believe there is. I think they've got five slotted for next year to join. Yeah, there's going to be a bunch more in the next mm-hmm. couple of years, in the next year, and then that's not even including what's going to probably be on the works for the next two or three years. I'm sure they've already got yeah. stuff in the works. Yeah, they mo- they moving forward, man. Yeah. I, I, that league, it'll be okay. It'll you know, be good. It, just don't charge people for streaming. But I'm it's sorry. Just, this is the thing about it. Like I, I noticed, that's been like a big topic. And my thing is, when you get to situations like that, like so many people have something to say with no solutions, with no even not even a solution in mind. So, I mean, before, you know, you never know, you know, what the, and it doesn't mean that they're struggling financially. Maybe they just see, you know what, we can, we can do it this way. And they looking down the thing, man. But 79 U.S. dollars to watch. It's the first, it's the first The same level of talent as the the NBL. I'd rather just watch the NBL. I mean, but that's the thing. And that's your right. Like you have, like you have the right to say, you know what, I don't want to pay that 79. But to go, like to start going online and you know, bashing the league and things of that nature due to the fact that you don't agree with them charging for games, is that, that doesn't make it any right than you think them charging for games. I mean, like, I, it was a, it was the whole write-up with the guy Tyshawn Patterson that played in this league before. He won, like, player of the week, and the discussion got to the to them charging for games. Like, like <laughs> honestly, I, I've, I've played professional sports, dude. I've played, like, in the minors of it, dude. I understand what a lot of people don't understand is I understand these guys struggle. Mm-hmm. I understand their drive. I understand what they go through. So to take it and say, you know what, because the league is doing something, let's overshine what this player is doing, you know, it's just not right, you know, like to, to, to take that approach. It's okay. If you don't agree with something, if I don't agree with it, let's just it, – I don't think it's right. That's my personal opinion, and we just move on from it. You know, like, but they, I'm pretty sure they have reason for doing that. You know, if, if you think about it, even – It's stream, not a bad idea, if, but I think it should be cheaper. Even if it's stream quality, right? Like, I'm pretty sure, Jake, no, like, dude, two – I remember – Two, three years into the NBL, people was complaining about the stream and how bad it was, right? It, it, it's up until now that they've been more consistent yeah. with good streaming. That's true. And like, this stuff takes, it takes a while, man. Yeah. Like, nobody builds a house from the roof down. Oh, I can tell you, you this didn't happen that. overnight either. This you, podcast, I yeah, agree. You, gotta, it, it, you don't, like I said, nobody builds a house from the roof down, right? You got to get a foundation out of it and start building on that, you know? So, who knows? Maybe next year they might have, without us even knowing, because we don't know the inner workings of why they're doing it, next year, streaming every game might be free. You know, it's Hopefully. just that's Hopefully. the thing about it. But I mean, to the the calm down on it, you know, not knowing the inner workings and and not having a solution. I mean, nobody's reached out and said, you know what, let me contact Magley and see why they're charging. If it's anything that I can do, or if it's anything my company can do, if there's anything we can do to try to help push so that people can view the games for free. You know what I'm saying? And, I tried and, to add him on Facebook. That, he didn't accept that, my friend request. That actually, that kind of seriously. Stuff. But I mean, but if you go I'm in, talk, if, you, if you go in and it's like, oh well, you know they're streaming and this league is subpar and it's this and that stuff. Do it like because honestly, like I feel like to say stuff like that, you have to be able to, to be picked up. If a team was to say we need you to do anything and you go and add value to that, you know that's when you can be extremely judgmental of an organization, of a team as a player if you're working in office or anything like that. You know, it's just to, I just feel like with professional sports in general, and I'm saying that from viewing it as an athlete, it's too many people chiming in on decisions with no solution, right? Mm-hmm. If, if I decide that, you know what, we suck in that defense, we got to do something defensively, I can go out there and pick it up defensively. You know what I'm saying? If I say this and that, I can go out and I can do that. But to sit there and be the worst defender ever known to mankind and saying how much we suck defensively, it doesn't it doesn't help the problem. You get what I'm saying? So I just feel like it's it's different avenues and until 
We, I did try yeah. to reach out and talk and, to him a little, but no one wanted. So, uh, no one wanted to talk to me. I, just, I don't know. Uh, I added I, David what, Magley to say to him, "Hey, man, but just, just curious uh, as to why, so I can I can actually when people that, are complaining that, on my uh, post saying, hey, why are you why are you posting a feed on the NBL Canada page?'" Um, where they're trying to get us to pay for watching games. I'm not paying to watch games. But going, this, okay, well, I'll try and talk to them. Okay, and see. but it's like this here, though, man. Was that? Do you reach out prior to or after you bash or call it? Uh, this is before. I, this is before I said the league was subpar. Actually, like, you know, do you I added out? David Magley. I waited, and he just didn't answer anything. And I went, "All right, well, you guys want to do this? I find that that as a league is very subpar to try. That would be like the NBL trying to get people to pay for." streams back when you joined the league when the league was in the second year third year when the the streaming wasn't very good nobody would have paid it and i think that would have crippled the league to be honest with you if the league would have done that do you think that would have helped or hindered the league two years think, ago three years think, ago i don't think it would have hindered them it, it helps being able to view them yeah it helps but i don't think it would have hindered like I, I don't think people would have not watched all it does is just it teams are able to follow their teams well, i'm not watching road. and there's a bunch of people teams, you're not watching so the thing about it this is the thing about it um if you take a team from our East, Moncton, when they came here, right? It's not going to stop their fan base. You know, it just gives their fan base a chance to watch them play on the mm -hmm. road. It's not going to hurt. You know what I'm saying? It just gives no. them like, the ability to watch their teams when they're on the road. That's all it is. But like I said, when it comes to that kind of stuff, you know, is is you, you never know. You never know why. Like I said, like I said, it could be next year. That everything is, you know, is free. They might just say, you know what, this is our first year. How do you know that they're not sitting there and they're like, you know what, I really don't want to do this, but right now we're going to have to. It's going to probably Because come it's off. like this with the podcast, Elvin. I don't make any money from this, as you want an example. Yeah. On Podbean, I could charge a cent a podcast. They've already given me emails and notifications that if you charge just one cent a podcast, that means next year you could charge four cents a podcast. And then the year after that, five cents a podcast. They're already trying to sell me on these analytics. But you know what I already know? I know people aren't going to pay even a cent to watch our podcast. That's not fair. Or maybe people are going to do it, but is it actually going to make us money? It's not yeah, going to do us anything. On Podbean, right? But people watch the podcast on Facebook and all that and things of that nature, right? So I know, and that's what and I'm it, saying. And it's not going to stop the following. Just because uh, you don't show, just yes you don't no, pay one because you don't pay one cent Podbean. Um, Podbean is trying to get me to get people to pay, which isn't going to work. And I found that using the free service from YouTube, uh, from YouTube or from Facebook, is actually a better, tr a better way to do it. I'm not going to even. I'm probably not even going to upload our stuff on iTunes uh, when our contract's up with Podbean. I'm not going to spend uh, 400 US or 400 dollars total. It's like 250 Canadian or something like that, and it comes out to 400 US. Um, just to put my stuff on iTunes when no one's really listening to it much on iTunes. Everyone listens to it for free on Facebook more. We have way more. I can show you the analytics. I can show you how on average we have around five minutes of viewership for a podcast. For Podbean, it's nothing. Wow. I only have a total of 57 total downloads for our podcast mm -hmm. and only 477 views total for our, our whole website. This our last episode had like seven or five hundred or four hundred and something uh, four hundred oh, people viewed and, and seven hundred people reached eight hundred people reached and that we don't makes, get that with Podbean trying to get people and Podbean's all about trying to get you to pay so that's right because Podbean makes money off of your what's name I understand that but we'll put it like this because I know time is wrapping up and you know we can't really get too deep into this any further but we'll put it like this let's say for this podcast. You did something that you didn't really want to do, but you know for the long run it's going to make the podcast better, right? And when you do that, nobody comes to you and say, you know, why are you doing it this yeah, way? Yeah, but here's another People one, just as come an, in and another say, example. And they just come in and say that that podcast is subpar, or it sucks because he's trying to do it this but way. But that's what people have were way. saying, though. They said the audio is crap, the video is crap, and then we had to switch it up really fast. And my other point is this, Elvin, uh, really quickly here. Um, for, oh, I never, we'll just wrap, we got to wrap. So we gotta get going. Uh, we gotta one get thing, going. one thing. No. I think the issue with the league that people have is Magley. You think so? I think a lot of NBL Canada fans, and the only reason we talk about this league or anybody talks about this league is they Canada, don't know a big fan of them. Is because people are upset with Magley, the way Magley left the league and was kind of working on this on the side while he was still kind of with the NBL. Oh, I didn't know so that. I think that's I think that's the issue. I think otherwise, 
Everything People leave it right. alone. It's just another. It's another league. Nobody said anything about the PBL being a threat. No, no, I don't have any problem with players. I just don't think. No, I'm not saying smart. this is your issue. I know no. you've got the the issue with the money uh, thing, but yeah. I think a lot of people, a lot of fans in the NBL, talk about the NAPB because it's David. It is. David David Dave, Dave, it's, it's, it's not being. To be honest with you, it's not. If they was to stream or whatnot, it's not streamed because they want to watch the basketball. It'll be streamed due to comparisons. Yeah. That, that's all sure. it is. Let's just be real about True. it. True. Or want, watching want, former players. It, 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 it's, you know, either watch former players or you'll stream to say, you know what? This league is not like the NBA. So, yo, this league is not like nothing. That's why I say the problem lies with us as people. You know, like, it's the approach to it all, right? No solution. You know, I'm just going to come in. You know, I'm not going to support it for the sake of support, and I'm going to support it so that I can put, compare or I can this and that stuff. And that's where it's at right now when you come to that league in the NBLC. But, like, in the granted, though, when players are doing great things basketball-wise, they're doing great things basketball-wise. And I don't think it should get overshadowed by people's personal opinion about somebody else when it comes to it. Right? I know, I know. You and know, I want to watch some of these guys play. I want to see DeAndre Thomas play. I want to see all these fellas Mario play. Mario Moon's there now, too. Uh, former Kareem Raptor. Kareem Rush. Kareem Rush, you former know, Raptor again, Elvin. Parker. You know, Not so a you, former Raptor. Yeah, but I mean, you got... So, I mean, that league has to be okay. They're getting former yeah. NBA players. Yeah. That's why well. I want to so see no it, Elvin. But at the same time, I also... So, it can't be subpar then. If they bring it in. I you know, said it's subpar for them trying to charge people. I never said uh-huh. anything about the talent, Elvin. I never said anything about uh-huh. the players. I said, as a league, charging people is very subpar. Like I said, if I started charging people for this podcast, people would be like, sorry, Ethan, you're a cool guy and all, but it's not going to work. <laughs> yeah. That's why we're trying to get sponsors to help pay for it. But it's, it's, I don't know. That's, that's the only example I can give you here, and just showing as a to try and relate it as a whole for me. Like that's how I relate to it. I relate to it as if I tried to charge people, no one would be paying for it. I don't know. I just I, I hope it works out for them. I want to watch the league. I want to see them grow. I want to. This is why we have our podcast. So we cover minor league sports like this because nobody really covers it. You don't see TSN covering them. You don't see the score covering at all because the score wants people to pay them. We're doing it for free. But anyways. I got a haircut today, guys. I'm all excited. Yeah, I can tell. I saw one. <laughs> haircut, haircut is just as snazzy as that sweater. I can tell. Anyways, I uh, go see one at the Cherry Home Mall, guys. Say you saw it from the Ethan and Elvin show. You can text them. You can call them. It's easier to text. You can text them at 519-719-5721. Also, it's kind of cold out. It's kind of chilly. Still nice though. You don't need to shovel the snow, guys. Get my little brother Seth to do it. Call him at 519 532 0076. That's perennial landscaping. Also, guys, like us on Facebook, iTunes, Instagram, subscribe on YouTube. It's Ethan and Elvin Show. There's a contest, isn't there, Elvin? Yeah. Got it. Got it. It was pretty packed with action, too, man, from what I saw. I know. I didn't even have to pay for the the boost from Facebook. They don't want me to pay for it. I'm not paying. You don't have to pay for the boost. You're right. But if you decide to pay for the boost, only you know why you're charging for it. No, I'm not doing it. Okay, then. So, I'm not. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I I don't, think, I'm letting it grow naturally. I, I think you I think, I think think you could have charged for it. And, and no. And not charging would have been No, because so. Facebook wants me to pay like $23 American, and then they say they're going to reach another 5,000 people for me. And the last time I tried that in the summer... It only reached like 700 people, and I'm like, well, that was a waste of 50 bucks. But it was, so it was a trial and error? Well, that, it was definitely an error. Oh, okay. There was definitely an error. <laughs> definitely, <laughs> definitely an error. Okay. Definitely a big time error. But anyways, the contest will be announced. The winner will be announced on Sunday. Oh, by the way, Ozzy Driscoll wants to know, where is the Niagara River Lions potentially going, Jake? Where was that league again, you said? CEBL. It's actually funded by Petco. Oh, Jesus. Actually, and they have the former CFL commissioner as their commissioner. That means a lot. So, fair enough. The guy who turned the CFL around, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, so that, yeah. Yeah, fair enough. That's not bad. Rousey, that's the C- Canadian Elite Basketball League. That's what it's called. Elite. Elite. And when is that going on? It's the summertime. It's going to be a summer league. So, so we're going to start right, this, this summer. Uh, but we were just talking about earlier, and I know we can cover this the next one, but yeah. just to touch on it, we were just talking about earlier with the NBL the reason when they pushed the season back and it was kind of going into more of the spring months and the attendance and stuff was down. Like, how do you summertime think that? Too, yeah, summertime. Yeah, summertime. I don't know, but I just noticed here, like, I kind of counted that people are crazy about their summer weather. Everyone's like, got vacation. You know, books. people got vacation. They at All cottages. Books. They, you know, they have, you know, they in the pools. They get, I have to have my vacation booked at work by the end of this month. Happening. So yeah. it's just, I'm just saying that, that, that 
That's going to be interesting to see. And we're only here. allowed one week in the summer, uh, one week of July, and one week of August. You can't take it all at once. Yeah. So, so I yeah. guess let us know in the comments below if you want us to talk a little bit to see you be next week. Yeah. Or your vacation time bookings. I mean, yeah, if, it's, if it has to be this late, I mean, that's <laughs> early. How am I supposed to know what I'm doing this summer? Yeah. But anyways, everybody have themselves a wonderful day. I forget oh, okay. how to cut this off. One sec.